The Block Clock is an e-ink display that allows you to do things like track the Bitcoin price, the sats per dollar price, the current block, and plenty of other Bitcoin metrics, as well as some really cool other features depending on the model you have. And dare I say, it is an excellent piece of Bitcoin art for your bookshelf. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to use and how to set up your block clock. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. Quick shout out to sponsors of the show, CoinKite.com. These guys just have the best damn Bitcoin hardware in the game. I love my cold card Mark IV. This thing is an absolute beast and has so many amazing advanced features for the hardest of Bitcoin hodlers. They've of course got their open dimes. They've got, hey, what we're covering today, block clock, both flavors of it. Uh, they've got all kinds of goodies here, seed plates, uh, apparel, tap signers, sats cards, all kinds of great stuff. So be sure to check them out, uh, coinkite.com, and you can use code BTC Sessions at checkout for 5% off everything in the store. Shakepay.com, if you're in Canada, easy way to be stacking sats. You can e-transfer in and out with no deposit or withdrawal fees, including when you withdraw Bitcoin. They got that covered for you. Uh, there's a thin spread. And if you use the link down below to sign up and purchase your first $100 worth of Bitcoin, you'll, give, uh, you'll get 10 bucks for free. You also get 10 bucks every time somebody signs up and does the same with your link that you share. Uh, you can shake your phone every single day for free sats. You can use their sats back Visa card, all kinds of great programs going on with ShakePay so that you can stack the most amount of Bitcoin possible. So check them out. Link is down below if you're interested in that free 10 bucks. Ledin.io, these guys, you can use your Bitcoin for a ton of different services. I've been using them for years. In particular, whenever I need my hands on dollars, but I don't want to sell my Bitcoin, well, I can deposit here. I can get a loan of my uh, loan of dollars to my bank account within 24 hours. And when I pay back those dollars, I get back the same amount of Bitcoin. They also have Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts so you can earn some interest with quarterly third-party audits in which you can cryptographically verify that your holdings were part of said audit, which is sorely needed in this industry, of course. They do have their B2X offering. They have Bitcoin-backed mortgages across Canada and select U.S. states. So be sure to check them out, start.ledin.io slash BTC sessions. And if you use that link to sign up and fund your account, you get 10 bucks for free. BitRefill. These guys, they help me so much living on Bitcoin because I can pick up any gift card I can imagine using Bitcoin, both on-chain and via the Lightning Network. Uh, I can earn sats back as I shop. You can earn additional sats back through their referral program. You can do things like top up your phone, uh, top up your Lightning channels, and you can pay your bills if you're in the US and you can get on that Bitcoin standard. If you click the link down below, you can go ahead and check them out. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, be sure to get it in solid steel with the bill foddle over at privacypros.io. Now, why steel? Paper just doesn't cut it. Honestly, you don't want to have to be worrying about fire damage and water damage. Just one other list of things that you have to worry about. Why bother? I get peace of mind with my bill foddle which is how I'm backing up all my important stuff. So head over to privacypros.io slash BTC sessions. That'll get you a little deal at checkout. Uh, and with that, let's dive into the show. So the block clock comes in two different flavors. Uh, I've got the block clock mini here which is this bad boy, not so many, <laughs> you know, it's a good size, uh, a little bit bigger. And then there is the block clock micro, which is this little guy right here. They are both super awesome, sturdy, uh, honestly, 
pieces of art. They're great. There's them side by side, just so you get a, a picture of kind of like the scale of what you're dealing with here. So what are the main differences between the two? Well, uh, they will both display more or less the same information, albeit a little bit differently depending on the screen size. Um, but you can get your price information, your uh, sats per dollar information, the current block, all kinds of different Bitcoin metrics. And we'll be diving into what those are momentarily. Now, the difference here uh, is that the block clock mini, the larger of the two, uh, does have a couple extra things you can do. Um, so on the back of this one, there is an SD card slot for easy updating, um, whereas the block clock micro is all done via Wi-Fi. And the other thing that the block clock mini has that the micro does not is a USB slot on the side here. Now this USB slot is used to interact with open dimes. So if you've seen on the show before, I have covered the open dime, which is more or less a bearer instrument for storing and gifting or exchanging Bitcoin peer to peer with individuals physically. So it's a physical device that you can hand over. And so you can plug uh, an open dime into the side of this and you can verify whether it's sealed, whether it's opened, and you can also verify the amount that is sitting on it. So we'll go through all of that as we get going here, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn the basic setup of the micro first, which is the exact same as the, uh, the mini. And then we'll take a look at some of the additional features on the mini versus the micro as we get past that initial setup. So let's dive in. So here is our block clock micro. You can see we've got our little e-ink screen here. If we turn it around, it's not currently plugged in yet, but it does come with a cord. Again, USB to USB-C, so that uh, pretty much you can plug it into anything, any USB port or just a block plugged into the wall. Nonetheless, on the back here, you will see there's three buttons, one, two, and on the other side, three. And those will correlate with instructions on the screen depending on what you want to do, and we'll see that momentarily. Uh, other than that on the back, not a lot that we need to be dealing with other than the plug-in right here, which is USB-C. Now, just by comparison, I really quickly want to show you the back of the Block Clock Mini, okay? So your buttons are all over on what will be the right-hand side when you're facing it, left-hand side when you're looking at the back. But nonetheless, there are four buttons along this side here. On the opposite end, that's where you're going to get your USB port, which is only used for open dimes. A regular USB will do nothing here. And then the SD card slot, and this can be used for updates, whereas the micro is just solely over Wi-Fi. Of course, this bigger one, the mini, does uh, work over Wi-Fi as well. So with that, let's get ourselves plugged in here. So I'm simply going to grab the micro, and we're just going to plug this in. The moment we do, we should see, see, uh, there we go. So we see action happening here. Hello. Okay, so this is going to give us uh, a Wi-Fi network to connect to. So it says uh, temporary Wi-Fi network. What it's doing is this is emitting a Wi-Fi signal so that you can connect to it and manipulate it and connect it to your own home Wi-Fi network. So we can see this is going to be the name of the network. So we're going to be looking for that in this case on our phone. Uh, which you could also do on a uh, on a laptop if you so chose. And there's our Wi-Fi password. You can change both of these parameters after the fact. And then you can actually see here, there's a, on the side, it says next, which would correlate with the top button here on the side. And then you can see exit, which would correlate with just the button over here on the left, okay? Uh, and it says we're on page one of five oh, down here on the uh, left bottom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to connect to this Wi-Fi network via our phone. Now you can, by the way, just scan this with your phone and that will uh, allow you to connect to it. So let's just take a look 
at how that's going to work. So let's just try giving this a scan and I'll zoom out a little bit here so you can see my phone. So I'm scan this. All right, and this brings up my Wi-Fi settings. Okay, so it will give you a message. Hey, it's connected to the device, but it can't provide internet. And that's just because obviously there's no internet going through uh, this device. That's fine. We just wanted to connect to it and we can click on it. Hey, connected to the device. We can't provide internet. That's totally fine. Um, that's all we really needed to do. Now you will get a notification likely that says, hey, it has no internet access, but tap for options. It says this has no internet access. Do you want to stay connected? And we're going to say yes. You can set that so it happens by default every time, um, but I have just left it for now. Okay, so we are indeed connected to the Wi-Fi network. If I pull down, I can see, hey, we're, we're connected to, if I click it, hey, we're connected here, but we don't have internet. Okay, that is fine. So what we can do is now that we're connected, we can hit next on the micro, which is the little button, the top right here. We'll hit that. And then it says, Hey, you're going to need to visit this page, which again, I can scan with my camera. So I'll just open up the camera, scan that. And here we are, we've got our own page and interface with our block clock micro so that we can set it up. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be selecting our home Wi-Fi network. So there'll be a drop down menu. You're gonna look for your home Wi-Fi, whatever that network may be, and then you're gonna enter your Wi-Fi password. So I will uh, do that off screen. And again, if you don't see it right away, you can hit scan again. So I'm gonna choose my Wi-Fi network from the drop down. We're gonna enter the Wi-Fi password and then I'm gonna hit connect and then we'll be right back. Okay, and we now get a message, success, we are connected to our Wi-Fi network, and it says you can now switch back to your regular Wi-Fi on your phone, or on your laptop, whatever you're dealing with. And down at the bottom and the top, there's a back button that you can hit to get back to your main screen and set up the rest of your block clock. So once we have connected to our Wi-Fi, hit the back button, you'll be bumped into the Wi-Fi tab here. And uh, I've now navigated away from it, but here along the top on this website that we connected to that is indeed still connected to our, uh, to our block clock micro, we have display, preferences, Wi-Fi, and firmware. So let's start with the display screen. And so, this controls what your block clock will show. First step is to select what values you're interested in seeing. You can select from various collections of related values or search for more detailed choices. So right here, there is a drop down menu and there's a, a, a number of different things that you can select. Now, this is showing some, some prices, some sats per dollar, some, some of the most popular things. Now I'm just gonna hit cancel to back out so you can see. You can actually, there's a lot more available values than that. So you can tap on common and this will now show you the most common, which I believe is what we were just on. Okay. If I hit cancel, I can hit date and time. And this drop down will now show a lot of date and time related metrics for Bitcoin. So the date, and, again, just regular local date and time. But then you also get all these different Bitcoin holidays. So like Genesis Day, like a countdown to it, or just the next one that's coming up. Proof of Keys, Lightning Payday, um, First Transaction Day, Silk Road Day, Death of Mel Gox, Gold Parity Day, Bitcoin Pizza Day, all of these things. And it can show as a date, it can show as a countdown, it can show the date of the next one, whatever it may be. And again, all of these are Bitcoin holidays. So there's no shortage of them. There's just a ton of them that you can add if you so choose. Same thing if I go to blockchain related stuff, it'll now show 
uh, the Bitcoin block type, the difficulty, the last block time, the Merkle root, the nonce, all of these technical stuff in and around Bitcoin. Okay, you can even do a search. So um, let's do and I'm not super excited about searching this, but let's say you want some data coming from Coinbase. So I can I can search that and now my drop down will be Coinbase related data. Okay, so we can clear that because I don't want Coinbase related data. Let's just go to the most common ones. And I would love to get uh, first off the Bitcoin price. Mm, what do I want the price to be coming from? How about we'll just do the the uh, Clark Moody market price. OK, so I'm going to tap that one. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit add. So this is now added to my display of potential uh, data that can be displayed on my blog clock micro. Let's go ahead and add another one. So I'm going to drop down. Now, sats per dollar can also be known as Moscow time. Now, there's a story behind that. You can Google it. It's kind of hilarious. But nonetheless, I would like to see the sats that I can purchase with a single US dollar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check this one off too. And I'm going to add it. And maybe I'll do one more. Maybe I can get the current block. Now, this is not shown in this set of data here. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, I'm going to hit Add. But then I'm going to go blockchain related stuff. And let's see. I'm going to say the block height is what I would like to see. So that's whatever the current block we're on. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Add. So now down below, I can see I have three different things added to my possible metrics that I could be viewing on my block clock because I've selected them, checked them off and hit add. OK, and I can actually select one and it'll show down here. But not only that, looky, looky what we have here. It's already reflecting on my block clock. And as a matter of fact, if I hit next on the screen, there's the block height. If I hit next on the screen, there's the sats per dollar or Moscow time. <laughs> so the block clock is already connected to my internet and is already reflecting what I'm telling it to update. Now, again, the display setup, there's more to it. So you can add as many of those as you want and they will cycle through automatically. So display preferences is where you set those displays, okay? Now, how often do you want it to update? I like having mine on a quick time frame, five minutes. Every five minutes, it'll rotate through a new thing. That should be fine. Um, you can set it to rotate beyond that. Uh, you can set a manual amount of time, or you can have it change every Bitcoin block. Down below, you can set the background color to black or white. Right now, mine's on black, but let's see what it looks like on white. There we go. Okay. I don't know which one you prefer. I think I'm I think I'm going to go with black on this one. There we go. Okay. Oh, and I've hit a button. <laughs> I can just exit by the way. If you accidentally hit a button, there's the exit button on the left-hand side. Okay. So let's keep looking through. So the label text you can uh so the label text would be down along the bottom or on the side here. Um you can hide it or you can show, which is the default. I'm going to leave it on. Lights flashing when changing. Uh, I tend to like mine on green, so I'm going to hit green. And there is a little, I'll, I'll show you on the back here. There is a little light here, so let's show orange. So you got a couple lights on the background that will flash every time there's an update to the block clock. And what I mean by update is it cycles through to a new metric. So every five minutes, it'll do a little flash for you, whatever that is. I tend to like them on green, you know, nostalgic for green candles. Uh, you can also, and I'll leave that there. So there's a couple little lights on there that will flash every time. Um, let's scroll brightness of the uh, lights. I leave it at 100%. 
animation speed. Uh, I just leave it at medium, time format, AM, PM, or 24 hour. I, I don't have the time on here, but nonetheless. Oh, and uh, by the way, the label text that I was mentioning, you can see it now with the price down at the bottom. It says, hey, the market price of Bitcoin. Okay, so that's that's the about text or the uh, label text that I was talking about. Okay, and down at the bottom, swap period versus comma. So in the in the EU, uh, instead of having a a period, or rather, instead of having a a comma for prices, they'll have a period. So again, you can change that however you like. So that's all good there with our display. We've got that all set up. Let's take a look at the preferences menu. So this allows you to change the system password, which I recommend doing, of course. Um, so you can type that in here, enter the new password and hit save. Your time zone, you can set your local time zone, especially if you're actually dealing with, uh, if you have a time that's displaying on this thing, then you're gonna wanna do that. Uh, you can set the name of the block clock. So I have a mini and a micro, here and so I might rather than having the random Wi-Fi name that I had I could change this to say block clock micro and then it'll show up as that Wi-Fi when I'm connecting to it it'll show up as that in my optional networks and then this is really cool here too uh, external URLs so these services are used to fetch market and blockchain data each has the potential to reveal your IP address to outsiders, but these data sources have been chosen with care. You can change where you're getting your data from. So you can put in your own uh, data URL if you have another source that you'd like to pull it from. And you can even choose, again, North America, Europe, Asia, whatever it may be. And you can test that connection. If it doesn't work, just to reset to default. So this just gives you a little bit more uh, optionality when it comes to how data is sent to your block clock. And finally here, let's take a look at firmware. We already did the Wi-Fi thing. We were just in there, but we're going to go to firmware. Okay, and so this says, this is where you can upgrade your firmware. Now, doing this on the micro versus the, uh, versus the mini can be a little bit different as the mini does have the option to do it via SD card. A little bit different here. So there's a few ways to upgrade. You can uh, get the latest firmware directly from CoinKite. You can upload a new binary file file from your local computer or I guess your local uh, it would be your from your phone if you download it to your phone or you can fetch the firmware from a URL you provide um, at this point it shows my current firmware 1.2 now I happen to know that's not the uh, that is not the current version so you can update this so what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to, I could do this different ways. I could do this on my computer. Again, I could connect to the Wi-Fi emitted by this device and then go to 21.21.21.21 .21 and then go to the firmware section. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, download the latest firmware onto my phone. What I'll need to do is disconnect from this device and go on to my regular Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna hit get latest and it shows me the firmware here, okay? Or the, the, the link that I need. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna get off of this Wi-Fi and go back to my regular Wi-Fi or maybe I'll just turn off my Wi-Fi for a moment. So by pasting the link that I just found on my blog clock into my browser, it will automatically download the file that I need onto my phone. And now I should be able to connect back to the Wi-Fi emitted by the blog clock in order to finish this firmware update. Okay, so we are back connected to our blog clock. We went to the 21.21.21.21. .21 .21 .21 
and we're on the firmware section. So I have now downloaded that file. So I'm gonna hit choose file and I'm gonna find it in my downloads folder on my phone. Again, this could be done on your computer if you have trouble navigating where files are on your phone. And we're going to choose it and go from there. So here we are in my downloads. I can see latest.bin. That's the thing I just downloaded alongside some fun Halloween pictures that we took at Halloween. But nonetheless, I'm gonna choose this one. So with that file, I can, uh, it's, it's chosen there. And then here where it says slot number, we can hit select and reboot. And we can see we actually got a message here. Firmware file received version 1.2.2 file size. System will now reboot to use this file. And in the background here, we see a rebooting uh, block clock, which should connect momentarily. And we do see the lights are on as well. All right, we're back in action. Everything's working. I did have to uh, reconnect to the Wi-Fi just to kind of expedite things and go to my display page and cycle through everything. But it did show us connected, so it may have just been a matter of me waiting a couple minutes for me for it to cycle to the next uh, piece of data that it was to display. But nonetheless, it is up, it is working, and we are all set. All right. At any time, you can connect to the Wi-Fi from this thing. Go to 21.21, .21, four times over, I'm not going to say it all. Uh, and then you can add available values here by, again, drop down, choose what you want, check off as many as you want, hit OK, and then hit Add. And they will be added down here. If you would like to remove one, let's say, for instance, I go to the block height. Maybe I don't want the block height. I can just go and I can hit remove. And that gets removed from the options in terms of what's going to be on my screen here. So now we can just see the two. And even if I just hit the next button. Okay, that goes to Moscow time. Next button. That goes to the dollar price. Next button back to Moscow time. So I've now removed the block height uh, just through this menu here, and I can re-add it above if I so choose. And that's pretty much it for the block clock micro. However, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what the mini has to offer that's above and beyond what's happening here with the micro. So here we are with the Block Clock Mini, and already you can kind of see the difference here in the amount of information you can fit on this thing. So this is after initially plugging it in right out the gate. It gives you your step one, it gives you your link to set up and connect to the Wi-Fi network. It says, hey, next go to this website, which is right here, and then you can do all of your settings like we did with the original. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, one other thing I wanna show you, by the way, is again, here's your options because all the buttons, all four buttons are over here on the side. Uh, so everything is gonna be selected from this side, whereas the ports are over here for the open dime and the SD card labeled on the side here. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna get this thing set up on my Wi-Fi as we did with the micro, and then we'll be back once it's all set up. All right, so here we are with the Block Log Mini set up, and I just kinda wanna show you the difference in, in how the display works, um, and just kind of the, the size and the look of the information being displayed. So I've already added the block height, the price, and Moscow time here, and I'm just on the app, and I'm just hitting the next, and I'm cycling through them, just so you can see what it looks like. So we'll go from block height to our Moscow time. And we'll go to our regular price. Okay. So again, you can kind of see just the information is displayed much larger. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out just in terms of physical look is that there are actually four little lights on this. Uh, and I'll just kind of show there's... There's orange, there's green, there's a white option, there's a red option. I don't know why you would choose red, but you know. Um, so nonetheless, yeah, it's it's effectively, 
the same information here, just displayed a little bit larger and some <laughs> additional flashy lights. Now, the main difference here is primarily in how you can one, uh, access your open dimes, but two, do any updates, okay? So in terms of firmware, now we saw what it was like to update uh, online, but you can also go to CoinKite's website and you can download the file and you can put it on a micro SD card. And in order to actually utilize this, you would just plunk it in the side here, just kind of clicks into place here. There's a little uh, spring mechanism that keeps it in. And now to access anything in the menus on here, all you need to do is just hit any one of the buttons on the side. And again, they're just, just little circular buttons here. Okay, so I can just hit, mm, let's do the top one. This will open up my menus and I've got the option for, hey, SD card, network setup, power off or back. Obviously I wanna be using the SD card for this update. So I'm gonna click SD card. And then it says, hey, do you want to upgrade to 1.2.2? Yes, I would. Let's go ahead and click that. It says upgrading system will reboot when complete. Please be patient. So we're just going to let that go ahead. We see the little corner light here. Let's me know it's doing something. And uh, we'll be back once this is all updated and good to go. Okay, just a couple minutes later here and the block clock has rebooted and after a minute or so of having the screen blank, it started up again and started with the block height. So we're pretty much set. That is it. And um, yeah, it's easy as pie. I find I do tend to prefer updating via the SD card. Um, it's a little bit more seamless, um, whereas... I was a little uncertain with the Wi-Fi update um, setting, but it did work out nonetheless. So uh, I guess plus one for the mini in terms of upgrades. Let's chat open dime because you can actually check these with your block clock. How cool is that? So really simple. This is an, uh, an unset up open dime. It hasn't been unsealed. It hasn't been funded, nothing. It is a fresh open dime. So I'm going to just insert it here. Checking. All right. It says open dime. It's new, factory fresh, has not been touched. That's all the information we need. Great. So I can pull this one out. Now I do have one that I believe has been not only uh, set up, but actually has been funded. So let's take a look at what that's gonna look like instead. All right, so this one, a little bit different. It says, hey, this one is sealed, but it has been initialized. So what does that mean? It means I have created the entropy, I've dragged in some files to actually create a wallet out of it. It has a private key and there's a public address that you can send to. It is sealed, it means that you, nobody has the private key, nobody can pull the money off of it currently, uh, but I can actually get the balance as well. And I can do that from the little button, kind of hard to see, but in the top right corner, it says get balance. So I'm gonna press that button and here we see after hitting get balance in the top right, that this open dime is sealed. There's the de deposit address, and we can see there's 50,000 sats, which is around 10 US dollars uh, allocated currently to this address. So really cool feature from the block clock of being able to actively deposit to, check the state of, and audit the balance of your open dimes. And to get out of this screen, quite simply, just pull out the open dime. And you'll jump back to one of the screens, whatever is currently timed for, and it will continue functioning as normal. The block clock is probably one of my favorite pieces of 
uh, I don't know what to call them, Bitcoin curiosities that are assembled on my shelf behind me here. Uh, it's such a cool way to kind of interact with and be privy to a variety of Bitcoin metrics. It's customizable to show whatever information you want to show. And there's constantly updates and new metrics that you can add to that. Um, it's also a great talking piece, right? Like if you have it displayed somewhere in the home and you have friends by, it's always an interesting uh, way to start a conversation. Oh, what's that? And you can talk about the different things that it's displaying. And yeah, as a Bitcoiner, I've got to say it's one of those things that, um, you know, if, if you're a fan of Bitcoin, you're going to enjoy having something like this on your shelf. Now, in terms of what's better, the, the micro or the mini, um, it's really just going to depend on you. Obviously, the micro is not going to break the bank as much as the mini. Um, I'm not going to quote prices here because they can obviously change as this video ages. Uh, so just check the website. But obviously, the micro is going to be cheaper than the mini. But it, it's really going to come down to, do you care about the size of the display? Um, and it's also going to come down to, do you want to be able to interact with your uh, open dimes and audit them and check them and check the balance and stuff on the spot? I think that's a really cool feature. I enjoy stuff like that. Um, but for some of you, maybe you don't interact with open dimes and maybe you don't really use them. So it's going to be up to you. It's also, do you want the SD card slot for um, uh, easier updates uh, for quicker updates. I found it to be quicker anyways. I think I prefer the SD slot, but you can obviously update just via Wi-Fi and that's fine too. Um, and I should add that uh, while I didn't show it in this video, you can actually broadcast a transaction via <laughs> via your block clock. Um, and so, you know, how that would work is you maybe have a cold card, you would set up your transaction on Sparrow or whatever, however you're interacting with your cold card, then you can sign the transaction on the cold card, and then you can put the SD card into the block clock and broadcast it. Now, again, like the practicality of if you're going to actually want to do that, you know, you're using three different devices at that point. Why? But it is a cool feature that you can plug in an SD card with the partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And just as we did with, uh, with updating via the SD card and hitting a button, um, you can update via, <laughs> you can, or rather you can broadcast your, uh, your transaction by plugging in the SD card and just hitting a button in the top right and it will broadcast for you. Um, so again, some interesting features with the mini versus the micro. But if you just want that display, if you just want something little to display some metrics so you can see them, micro might be the way to go. But uh, both are great. And if you're going the route of getting a block clock, you're not going to be disappointed either way. It's a really cool, dare I say, art piece for any Bitcoin or shelf. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton when it comes to getting this content in front of more eyeballs. So if you think it was helpful for you, then be sure to do all of those things. Now, if you do need a little bit of extra help anytime you're doing anything Bitcoin, uh, you can always book me for private one-on-one -on -one sessions, or you can check if I'm coming to a city near you for a workshop, and you can do so at btcsessions.com. CA, you'll see all relevant links there. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin tip at my strike page. That is strike.me slash BTC sessions. You head there, you type in any amount you like, you hit the tip button, you'll be greeted with a lightning in, uh, invoice, or if you tap to the right, a regular Bitcoin QR code. Don't forget to hit up those previously mentioned sponsors or CoinKite, the link down below if you do want to pick up a block clock. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN